Okay, hello everybody. Welcome if you've just joined us. I'm now going to introduce Arno, who is going to speak to us about human-centered API governance. Hello, Ilana. Hello. Hello, everyone. And I'm just checking to see if we can see your slides okay. Okay. Yes, it seems so. Yep, looks great. Okay. Love so the Monty Python reference. <laughs> yes. Uh, so let's go. Yes. So the stage is all yours now. Thank you very much. OK, so hello, everyone. My name is Arnaud Loret. I work at Natixis, a French uh, financial group, subsidiary of the BPCA group, offering various services such as payments, trading, uh, corporate banking, or employee savings. Uh, I have to admit that I'm quite passionate about APIs. I talk about it on my blog and Twitter under the name of API Handyman. I speak about it um, at conferences like today. I wrote a book, uh, The Design of Web APIs, uh, published by Manning. And uh, I, but most of all, I've been lucky enough to be a cross functional API expert at Natixis for the last three years. I work within the uh, architecture and innovation department, which supports all Natix's business lines by bringing its expertise on topics such as uh, data, artificial intelligence, robots, UX, UR, or APIs. I often summarize my job as helping people understand and create APIs. And today I'd like to share this experience with you, three years helping many different teams to API all the things. But why API all the things? At Netixis, we are interested in API for two reasons. The first one is to make IT more flexible. APIs limit coupling, hide complexity, make communication between systems faster, um, integration are made more quickly, re reusability is increased in various contexts. All this makes it easier to adapt to new business needs. The second reason why APIs are important for Natix is, is to enhance our business value. Uh, on the one hand, by getting expertise from the outside, uh, which will integrate in our offers using APIs. And on the other hand, uh, providing our own expertise through APIs to our existing customers or totally new markets. It sounds like uh, great things can be achieved with private and also public APIs, but all this will only work in practice if these APIs are good APIs. And this is the core of my work at Netixis. I often use the terrible kitchen radar 3000 to explain what is not a good API. In a kitchen, nobody wants to turn a magnet one on for 30 seconds and turn it off for another 30 seconds and so on until some uh, frozen dish has been uh, defrosted. In a kitchen, people prefer to be able to heat food at a given power for a certain duration without being bothered about how magnetron works. An API must be simple to use, simple to understand, and fulfill actual users' needs. This API theory, sold by many API practitioners, myself included, seems quite simple, but how does it go in practice? Well, it's complicated. Uh, working on many APIs in the long run helped me realize there are far more concerns to take care of to actually create good APIs. Reusability, security, performance, contextual design compromise, documentation, organization, and more. And hidden in more, there is a major concern, consistency. In order to be simple to understand, simple to use, APIs must share a common look and feel, common behaviors. If being alone and working on a single API, being consistent is already not that easy. Imagine several people working on many different APIs across a large organization. And if it is already hard to be consistent if experts work on all those APIs, imagine when many beginners with the best will start to create many APIs without any help. The chances of creating good APIs at scale are very, 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 very low. And last but not least, there may even be people who are not convinced by the value of APIs or simply do not even suspect that topic exists. 
So creating APIs, creating good APIs at scale, at a team, a business unit, company, group level, in the long run, moving from theory to practice will not be done magically. It actually requires some work. So let's see how to foster the creation of good APIs. For people to adhere to a vision and implement it, they must be aware that the vision exists and be convinced. So there is no secret. Take your big green stuff and go everywhere to explain in a didactic way, adapted to the targeted audiences, what APIs are, what you gain by using them, by creating them, the importance of doing them well, but whatever the vocation, internal or external APIs, and insist on the fact that it does not cost more to do well. On the contrary, the leverage effects are even rather interesting. And when I say targeted audiences, I mean IT, business, and management. But why make IT aware of APIs? In IT department, we already know APIs or formerly web services. We have been doing them for decades, and we know how to do them well. According to my experience, this is true sometimes, but most of the time. Uh, we are far from what we call good APIs nowadays. We are more facing technical productors that do the job, but these are only APIs that you can put in the hand of anyone without worrying too much. They are often complex, hard to understand, hard to use, brutally exposing the internal mechanics. They can even be dangerous in non-experts' hands. Very often, the technical side is mastered, but very often, the design vision is missing. And it is very important for IT to become aware of that in order to move forward. When talking to business people about APIs, it's often a question of moving them into a totally new world. You have to make them understand that these application programming interfaces have actual business value, that working on internal API is a tremendous lever for business flexibility, that external APIs can open up new markets. And you have to talk to IT and business together. It's really important to make them understand that APIs are something that they must do together. Working in silo on APIs is not possible. And finally, orthogonally to IT and business, it is important to uh, imply the management because if there are no sponsors, it is uh, sometimes difficult to move forward, even if operational teams are convinced. Fortunately, at Matixis, we uh, have had sponsorship at very high level from the stars. Convincing people uh, of the benefits of APIs and the importance of doing well, doing them well is a good start. But the road is still long. And the next step on your journey is being able to create consistent APIs. Take a few popular APIs and compare them. You'll see that there are variations in the way they are designed. If you ask the same question to four API designers, uh, there is a good chance that you will get six different answers. If in the vast outside world, seeing different organizations uh, creating APIs with a different design, uh, it's totally normal. Seeing this inside an organization is a problem. Consistency in API design is essential. Uh, it will be an organization because once developers have understood how the first API works, they are not disoriented when they move on to the next. They even may be quite pleased to feel just like home. This common base, these design rules that uh, will set the look and feel of your APIs are defined in what is called API style guides or API design guidelines. Having guidelines does not matter only for building a great developer experience, but also matters for people who will design APIs. Uh, defining a common base allows each designer to uh, avoid wasting time trying to find a solution to a design problem that has already been solved. But that will only work if those guidelines apply the good API theory to build the best possible designer experience. Guidelines must be simple to understand, simple to use, and fulfill actual designers' needs. So do not reinvent the wheel. Do not reuse your possibly outdated and highly specific practices. Follow outside world standards and common practices that will make your guidelines easier to follow. 
do not write your guidelines in circumvoluted, incomprehensible, super experts that love to hear themselves style. If people can't understand your guidelines, be sure they will not apply them. Make them simple to use, just like you would do when creating API documentation. Once you have defined rules, create use case oriented design patterns or design recipes describing in one place all rules that actually apply for one use case. That way, people will not lose their time and easily design APIs that comply to your guidelines. Uh, design rules uh, define rules only when that is actually necessary. If you are unable to explain a rule, don't put it in your guidelines. Design rule must exist only to help people, not unnecessarily constrain them. And listen to people. Accept changes, evolutions. Rules are not set in stone. You must never hesitate to make them evolve by adjusting or completing them based on API designers and implementers' feedback. Now, if everything goes well, we have people aware of good API theory and we have rules that make it easier to actually do API that way. So what could go wrong when creating API at scale? A lot of things, if you don't actively help people to design API, it's not because you broadcast the message, oh, APIs are good and should be done that way, but it will be actually heard, well received and applied correctly by everyone. Even though people try to follow the rules, sometimes they will make mistakes inadvertently or because they misunderstood the rules. Guidelines don't cover everything. It is sometimes necessary to invent new design patterns. And not all consistency matters can be solved by guidelines. Is an API consistent with other APIs in the domain? Is a customer, an account, or any other business concept defined in an API operation consistent with other operation inside the same API or with other APIs of the same domain? While form is important, substance is vital to APIs. Having design guidelines will not guarantee that an API will meet the right need in an efficient way. Do we have the right vision of the need? Is the resulting API really user-friendly? Is it to understand, is it to use for someone outside the organization? Whether you are a beginner or an experienced designer, you can make mistakes on purely formal issues or even when, when you know the guidelines. One can also produce an API that is totally compliant with the guidelines but fail on the substance and create an API that is useless or does not meet the need that may not even be the right one. So no matter how much people know about APIs and the importance of their design, it is important to do APIs and reviews. It is important that several people can look at and challenge a design. An API must be analyzed from different perspectives, business, uh, IT, developer experience to guarantee its success. And it is important that at least one external person uh, participate to these reviews, or at least someone who can act as if. Uh, because if we, if we don't do that, uh, we can quickly fall into the creation of specialist APIs that will look like a kitchen rather free for them. But beware, uh, these reviews can quickly turn into a counterproductive trial if you are not careful. A design review is not about policing and being beating up on people because their design is breaking the law or non-compliant or worse. It sucks from the reviewer's perspective. An API design reviewer is not the inquisition of API design. Seriously, nobody expects the API inquisition, but literally, people expect a helpful hand. Being an API design reviewer is more about being a consultant, helping people identify their needs, choosing the best possible representation, um, helping them make decisions, adapting to the context, explaining the consequences of going in one direction or another. And let them choose because they are the owners of their APIs. API design reviewers must respect API ownership. Actually, sometimes they must make people realize that the APIs they are working with are their APIs. And so they should stop blindly say yes to any demand and start thinking about how to make their API evolve for the greater good. <clears throat> That's why I always present <clears throat> sorry, reviews as help and not a control that makes people more comfortable with it. Um, I also propose for teams who are beginning uh, to replace the review by a workshop so we can design the API together. 
And also such reviews can be done on pre-existing APIs and especially at domain level in order to evaluate the gap between current state and ideal good APIs. Uh, this analysis allows to uh, also to illustrate common design problems that should be avoided for uh, the next APIs and help to set the team on a good course towards good APIs. While executed, these reviews the workshop are, great, uh, are a great lever to foster the creation of good APIs in terms of forms, but also substance. It allows people to improve their skills because, because they learn a lot during reviews. It also fosters uh, the idea of API ownership. And incidentally, it allows to plant the seeds of API thinking a little more. And finally, if it's well done, and if it helps people, they come back and talk about you to other teams, which make it, uh, makes it easier to work as a cross-functional expert. But before people are happy and come back with pleasure, there is a, the first contact to pass. And when a cross-functional API expert like me offers his uh, services to do uh, design reviews, you have to be able to sell the approach. But even if you are the best salesman with the best services, if your services are not free of charge, they have little chance of being requested. That's why we have chosen not to charge for these services. Of course, the business units of the teams pay us indirectly. But when we intervene on a project, it's always a relief uh, for the team to know that the project's budget is not impacted by yet another cross-functional freeloader. So thanks to these financial subterfuge, but especially thanks to the services offered, we are really well received. But I personally don't want to set myself up as an ad vitam expert for all teams. That's not my goal. My goal is to lose my job. I want to teach people how to fish and not bring them fish every day. First of all, because in a large organization, it's difficult to be available everywhere all the time for everyone, unless you have an army with you. Secondly, because it's much more productive for a company and its employee to have everyone add to their expertise. And it's much more personally rewarding to share my expertise. We are now working with several teams to identify relays and set up an organization to enable the delegation of this activity in the long run. First of all, uh, we are looking for information relays, which will allow us to have a better vision of what is happening locally in terms of APIs, to have better feedback, and allow local teams to have a closer first point of contact. Uh, we also, uh, thanks to this uh, information relay, we look for uh, future local experts in API design and architecture who will be able to do locally what we do transversely. Eventually, it is these local experts that the teams of the business unit will turn to in order to help them uh, in the creation of our APIs. But to get there, even if people can be trained to the job through uh, design reviews and workshop, it is important to structure a real training offer. Among various sessions about how we actually do APIs or analytics or uh, security or API architecture, uh, we initiated the creation of a three-part API design training cycle. Uh, the first part, which is already available, allows to acquire the basics of API design from the good understanding of what is API, uh, what it means to design it, identify needs, decompose them, to present them as REST API, respecting our guidelines. Uh, the second part coming soon will focus on more complex use cases, such as modeling processes, managing asynchronism, managing evolutions. Uh, we will also study large scale uh, design aspect plus API consistency, choosing to create one or more API, for instance. And the last part will be about doing actually API design reviews. I will not hide the fact that first and second parts are strongly inspired by the content of my book and our guidelines. Uh, for the last part, uh, it will be a little, uh, a little bit more complicated because it will be a matter of formalizing what is done on an API design review in order to have an approach that can be easily reproduced and above all that avoids the error that are typical of activities uh, aiming at giving uh, an opinion on something. But wait, my session is called Human-Centered API Governance. And I didn't say the word governance yet. But I actually have been talking about the dreaded API governance all along. People are more often than not 
frightened by governance because it is too often synonymous with police or even Kafkaesque dictatorship. In its worst version, we imagine it as being the work of all bearded men who will issue dictates from their ivory tower. Uh, these men being accompanied by an army of henchmen who will zealously make sure that everyone goes straight and beware of those who do not. From my perspective, governance must not be like that. Governance is about enabling people to do things in the right way as simply as possible. And everything I just described, raising awareness, uh, user-friendly guidelines, um, reviews and workshops that help people to grow, organization, training, all this is governance. But a governance that is human-centered, a governance that capitalizes more on culture, people and their skills, rather than on control for control's sake. But be careful, don't believe there manners must not be any constraint. You have to know how to adapt the level of constraint according to the context. If at the Natixis level, two unrelated business lines have a different representation of customers in their APIs, it's not a problem. These entities do not do the same business. So as long as they are using the guidelines, everything is fine. But the further down the organization, the more important the need for consistency and so constraint Within uh, an API or the API of the same domain, consistency is really important. So you have more constraints, but this is the responsibility of the local teams. We will do this naturally because they have been made aware of it, accompanied, trained, not because they have been shouted at by some zealot henchmen. So I hope I was able to talk about API governance without frightening you. Uh, I did not talk about tools, I did not talk about API gateways, API management solution, API portals, uh, open API interface contracts, automated control with spectral. I also did not go into details about governances. Uh, these are actually important aspects of any API program, any API governance strategy, but many people think about that first, but the important thing is elsewhere. If there is one thing you remember from my session today, I want you to remember that to succeed with your APIs, you have to invest in people and their skills. Creating good APIs is first and foremost a question of mindset and culture before being a question of process and tools. Thank you very much. Oops, yeah. sorry, I was muted. Thank you very much. That was a really interesting talk. Um, I have a question for you, actually. Um, what skills do you need to do a good API design review? Ah, yeah, interesting question. Uh, you actually need many skills and uh, maybe technical skills, but that's not the most important. To be a good API design reviewer, you have to uh, show empathy to the people you are working with. Uh, you have to be able to make people talk. You have to make people realize they are making the right or the wrong decisions. And uh, you have to be able to let people design their API the way they want, even if it's not the way you would have done it. As long as it's easy to understand, easy to use, and following the guidelines, you have to say, okay, you can do it that way. So uh, you, the competencies of uh, good API design review world are more related to uh, social relationships, being able to discuss with people. So now we're back to the um, human-centered part. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And along those lines, um, how do you behave if people disagree with the recommendations of their API, API reviewer? Uh, so it depends on, wh on, on what kind of topic they disagree. Uh, if they want to design the API their way, and if I consider if it's okay, even if I didn't do what, that, what, that way, I say, okay, sure, do that. But if uh, not following my recommendation uh, leads to problem, I explain what are the consequences, uh, the possible consequences of doing that way. And uh, we try. I try to find a solution with the people. Uh, maybe you can fix it later, or 
and so on based on the consequences but after that say okay now you know what will be the consequences now it's up to you it's your apis so do as you wish okay Th thank you very much for a really great presentation thank you Elena. thank you everyone and so uh, goodbye <laughs>